And so friends, welcome here this evening on the last day of 2020, as we look forward to welcoming in 2021. Uh, and so as we gather together to celebrate and to look forward to a new year, I invite you to join me as we listen to the words of Psalm 8 as our call to worship this evening. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouths of babes and infants you have found a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the work of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name over all the earth. So shall we pray. God of new beginnings, you wipe away our tears and call us to care for one another. Give us eyes to see your gifts, hearts to embrace all creation, and hands to serve you every day of our lives. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so friends, as I have already said, a very warm word of welcome to you this evening. Uh, the service will be available from six o'clock, but perhaps you have chosen to start watching around uh, quarter past, half past eleven, so that you can see in the new year in this way. And, and that's wonderful if you have. Uh, a little bit later, towards the end of the service, we're going to light a candle, remembering all of those who have passed away this year, but particularly those and the families who have struggled with COVID-19 and, and an unexpected loss where suddenly illness has struck and we've lost those close to us. And so perhaps you'd like to uh, get a candle if you haven't yet. Also want to encourage you uh, as you remember those loved ones, perhaps you'd like to just note their name uh, on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, simply under the comments, just, just the name of the person you've lost. Um, on YouTube, the same under the comments, the name of the person you've lost. Uh, just as a way of remembering them and saying these are the people that we remember as a community. But I'll remind you of that again a little bit later. Friends, we continue in prayer as we prepare ourselves to hear the word of God. Let us pray. And so, Lord God, as we gather in this place this evening, we are so mindful of the year that has gone before us. And we are mindful also, Lord, of the year which is to come. And as much as we may hope that the coming year is better than the last one, we really don't know. Lord, it is in times like these that we choose to put our trust in you. It's in times like these that we choose to worship you. It's in times like these that we choose to say, you are our God and we will trust you. And so, Lord, we pray that as we go into the new year, we'll be able to put as much trust in you as you put in the Father when you went to the cross, gladly saying, thy will be done. Lord, in this way, you experience resurrection life. And we pray that we will too, regardless of what the future holds. For we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. And so, friends, I invite you to turn with me to Scripture, reading from the book of Joshua in chapter 1, and then the first nine verses, and then the second part of verse 18. So Joshua chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 9, 
And in the second part of verse 18. So let's go to Joshua chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to the ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And in the second part of verse 18, only be strong and courageous. And so, friends, those words this evening as we prepare to welcome uh, uh, the new year in. Friends, what a year it has been, hasn't it? Uh, it seems like just yesterday when we were talking about closing the church and then having to close the church uh, towards the end of March. Uh, and we haven't been able to meet together really since then. We had three services towards the end of, of this year and then we were shut down again for the second wave of the coronavirus. Uh, normally when we get to this time in a year and we're looking forward to the new year, we're in a place where we're hoping that the new year will be something better. We're hoping uh, that everything that didn't happen in the old year is going to happen in the new year. But I think for many of us, we, we are more afraid of what the new year is going to bring. We have heard the, the startling news of the second wave of coronavirus. Many of us are suddenly ill. We're finding uh, people that we're close to have contracted the virus. And we believe that the worst is going to hit us in January. So it's very difficult to be positive about a new year. I saw a cartoon the other day uh, on Facebook where uh, there was a door labeled 2021, uh, you know, the door opening to the new year. And, and, and everybody was hiding behind a corner, poking the door open with a stick uh, to see what comes out before they rush uh, gladly into the new year. And perhaps you feel like that as well. Uh, we are not looking forward to the coming year because we don't know what it holds. And so for this evening, I chose a reading which is, is one of my favorites from the book of, of Joshua. And essentially the message is this. Do not be afraid. And I wonder if we can hear that this evening as we look upon the dawn of a new year with trepidation. I think you probably know the background to the story. If we go all the way back to the Israelites being kept in slavery in Egypt, and you'll remember they make their escape during the Passover when the firstborn sons of the Egyptians are killed after a whole lot of plagues and Pharaoh keeps hardening his heart. Eventually they're able to leave this place of slavery and they travel into the desert under the leadership of Moses. They receive uh, the Ten Commandments and, and, and they begin to cross the desert and begin to look forward to the land which has been promised to them, this land of milk and honey. And so Moses uh, puts together a group of spies, 12 in total, uh, and sends them to to check out this new land, to see whether it is good, to see what the people are like. Uh, and indeed, they come back with a report. Uh, and they hear how wonderful this land is. It truly is a land of milk and honey. And they bring uh, fruit back and these lovely grapes and big bunches of grapes and other fruit. Uh, but there's a problem. 
and this is that the land is full of giants. And, and so the spies report to, to Moses that it's, it's, it's too frightening to go into there. It's, it's a dangerous place. Um, there all these tribes, they're waiting to kill us. We don't stand a chance. They use the phrase, we were like grasshoppers in their sight. But of the 12 spies that they send, uh, there are two who have a dissenting view. Uh, Joshua, who now is about to lead the Israelites into the promised land, and Caleb. Uh, and they say to Moses, and they say to the people, but God will be with us. And if God is with us, we'll be able to enter into this land and be victorious. But they get shouted down by the others. And so God punishes the Israelites. And he punishes them by making them wander around the desert for 40 years until that whole generation has died out, the generation that wouldn't believe in what he could do. And then once they've died out, including Moses, leadership is handed to Joshua. And now Joshua prepares to take the Israelites into the promised land. Friends, I think that for many of us, 2020 has probably been a wilderness year. And, and for many different reasons. First and foremost would be the loss of loved ones, perhaps family members, perhaps friends or colleagues, people you know who have contracted the coronavirus and died unexpectedly. Uh, very often we, we expect people to die as they get older, but COVID has come and hit us uh, in, in ways which are very unexpected and have been very, very difficult to deal with. Uh, the isolation, not being able to see those who are ill in hospital, um, the knowledge uh, that perhaps they died alone without being, you being able to be next to them. Uh, perhaps the loss of job, loss of educational opportunities, uh, loss of income, perhaps even loss of purpose. Uh, that as things have taken their course during this year, you're not quite sure who you are and what you're supposed to be doing with your life anymore. And so 2020 really has been, for many of us, a wilderness year. And we're not sure that 2021 is going to be any better. Some of us are desperately afraid, even now. Family members are ill. Um, perhaps we ourselves are ill and we don't know if we're going to get better. We, we pray and we hope that we are, but, but we're afraid that we'll be one of the statistics. Uh, we are afraid for ourselves. We're afraid for our family members. We're afraid of what the year will hold economically. Uh, we're afraid of what's going to happen in South Africa and throughout the world. We are afraid uh, for our own well-being and the well-being of our loved ones. And I think those fears can be justified. Uh, we are right to be afraid. Uh, we are right to, to be worried about what the future holds. Even as the 10 spies who, who brought back a story about how terrible the land of, of milk and honey was, were justified in their beliefs. They had seen the people who, who seemed like giants. They had seen uh, the numerous tribes. Uh, and they asked the question, what hope do we have as a small group of people going into this place? As we may be asking ourselves the question, what hope do we have going into 2021? What hope do we have when this illness is all around? What hope do we have when we see our economy tanking? What hope do we have when I've lost my job and I don't see any prospects in the future? Now, there's nothing wrong with having fears. Uh, as I said, the fears would justify the problem. As we read uh, in the story, that not the section that we read this morning, but the section in Numbers which describes this whole event to us, is that the ten who were afraid didn't trust in God. Joshua and Caleb were saying to the crowds and to Moses, but, but God's big enough, God's strong enough, we can go into this land with God. If God's on our side, it's going to be okay. Uh, but the ten who prevented uh, the Israelites from crossing then into the promised land were unable to put their faith in God. They were unable to trust in what God could do. Uh, so because the people did not believe Joshua and Caleb, but instead believed the ten, uh, they were left to wander the desert for another 40 years. What strikes me is this. In the passage that I chose for this evening, finally, 40 years later, Joshua is getting ready to lead the people into the promised land. And as he does so, the message which is repeated over and over again 
to him from God is this, do not be afraid. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you. Only be strong and courageous. Friends, you don't need strength and courage when things are going to be easy. You only need strength and courage when things are going to get tough. And I'm sure that's why this is the message that God gives to Joshua, because God knew that it wasn't going to be a walk in the park. God knew things were going to be difficult, and Joshua needed all his strength and all his courage to be able to lead the people into that and through that. Friends, I think that's so important for us to hear tonight. As we go into 2021, we have reason to be afraid. But we need to be strong and courageous, very courageous. And we can be strong and courageous because God is going into the new year with us. Friends, just because we follow Jesus, uh, it doesn't make everything well and easy. Just because we pray for God to take away the coronavirus, it doesn't mean it will happen. Just because we go into a new year with faith and courage, doesn't mean we're going to have an easy time of it. From the moment that Joshua and the rest of the Israelites crossed over the River Jordan into the Promised Land, uh, they were at war. They were fighting the inhabitants. Remember the story of the city of Jericho and, and the different battles they had. And when they put their trust in God, they won the battles. And when they didn't trust in God, they lost the battles. And when they obeyed God, they won. When they didn't, they were taught lessons. And as they entered into this promised land, uh, they were required to have faith. The men had to be circumcised. They had to have the discipline to undergo that process. They had to stand steadfast. They had to realize that unfaithfulness was punished. And they had to actively take possession of the land. In fact, it was only a few hundred years later, under the reign of King David, that there was finally peace. Uh, that the people could stop fighting, that the land was settled, and there was a time of relative prosperity. Friends, I think the same applies to us for next year. We are still going to face losses. Let's prepare ourselves for that. But let's be strong and courageous and trust that the hand of God is with us. We are still, many of us, probably going to get sick in the next, next year or two until we get vaccinated. But let's trust that the hand of God is present in that. There will be many battles to face. We will be frightened and uncertain. But in the midst of this, can we be strong and courageous, be strong and very courageous, knowing that God goes with us. You see, this is the way God calls us to enter the new land, to come out of the wilderness that 2020 has been and to go into the promised land, to do so strongly, courageously, to remain faithful, to remain firm, to stand steadfast, to make sacrifices, to maintain discipline, but ultimately to trust in God and to trust that God is faithful. Friends, and I believe that as we do that, as we go forward into this new year, we will certainly come to know once again, Emmanuel, God with us. And friends, as we do that, it's going to be a wonderful journey of getting to know God even more deeply, getting to know his plans for our lives and being able to trust him completely. I pray that it would be so for you, even as it is for me. Amen. And so let us pray. At the beginning of this new year, we implore God's blessing upon our work and pray for the needs of this new year of grace. It is indeed a battle we face in which we need all the strength and courage we can find. Help us to trust in you, O Lord, to provide that courage. As we enter into this new year, which will be a time of great battle, we remember with sadness those who fought the fight this year and won their eternal salvation. We spend a moment in silence as we light a candle in memory of all of those 
who are in glory. Throughout all time you have blessed your people, O God, and dwelt among them. On the eve of this new year, inspire and guide us, that all we do may find in you its beginning and its fulfilment. Amen. Friends, Warren is going to lead us as we sing our closing hymn, that great South African Methodist hymn, Who Will Save Our Land and People? And of course the answer is Christ is Enough. Who will save our land and people? Who can rescue us from wrong? We are lost, faith false and foolish. We have slighted God too long. Save the people, Lord our Savior. Guide us home. Of sea washed sand, stretch our vision fast and boundless as our brown spread dusty land. Make our people strong and steadfast as the hills that claw our sky. Hear our prayer for land that people, God bless every. And so, friends, I invite you to join hands with those who are close to you as we say the grace together. And so now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.